Hi, welcome to Mash Hacks. My name is Ben Cull. Today we're going to be taking a look at water calculations and all of the terms and calculations that you're going to need to get up and running on your brew day. Now it doesn't matter if it's all grain or brew in a bag, these calculations are going to be applicable to everyone and they're easy enough that you can do them in your head as well. But a bit of a warning to my American friends, they're a little bit harder in Imperial. Let's go check it out. the water calculations I need in a day as a rainbow and in fact depending on my video editing skills we'll have one pushed right over there now essentially you have uh, different calculations you need to make along the rainbow now I like to start at the back because that's where we start with our first term the batch size it's essentially the amount of beer you end up with in your bottles or kegs now this beer comes out of your fermenter if you had 20 liters of beer in your fermenter and you only got 18 liters of beer out of the fermenter, that leaves you with two liters of true loss. That, that true loss or fermenter loss uh, is just dead space in your fermenter or it might be absorbed liquid into hops or it, uh, it could be anything. It could be if you use a spigot on your fermenter, it's just everything below the valve. If you use a siphon, it's just as far down as you wanna go without sucking up any of the yeast. So now that we have our batch size and true loss, we move on to the post-boil uh, volume. Now this post-boil volume is the amount of liquid left in the kettle at the end of the boil. Now this also takes into account kettle loss and or dead space in your kettle. Because if you had, uh, and in our example, we put 20 liters of liquid into the fermenter, but let's say we had 21 or 22 liters in the end of our boil, at the end of our boil in our kettle that would mean that we had one to two liters of kettle loss because we didn't have a dip tube or we didn't want to tilt the kettle or it's just whatever we left behind. So now we have our batch size, our true loss. We have a post boil volume uh, minus any kettle loss or dead zones in that. Um, the one after or rather back up the rainbow towards uh, the top is the pre boil volume. Now we calculate the pre-boil volume based on how much we boil off. This is also known as the evaporation rate because while you're boiling, the water evaporates. Now, this can actually vary quite wildly depending on your system. Um, in uh, Brisbane, I had up to 11 liters per hour um, from very vigorous boils on a really massive gas burner. Whereas the gas burner I'm using in Belgium here, I only lose three liters per hour. So really the only way to figure out your evaporation rate is to brew at least once. As a, a jumping off point, start at estimating maybe five liters per hour and, and go from there. That's a nice happy middle ground. So we've made it up the rainbow all the way to the top and that's our pre-boil volume. But now that we're at this point, the pre-boil volume, pre-boil volume is more of a target. And so we wanna start at the beginning now and work our way to that volume. So, uh, the next thing we need to think about is how much grain you have in your bill and how much strike water you're going to need. Now the amount of strike water you're going to need depends on how much grain you have in your grist. Now I'm going to use a basic example, an average example, uh, of 6 kilograms of grain for a 20 litre batch size. Now what I need to do is take that 6 kilograms of grain and just times it by 3 and that's the ideal home brewing mash thickness or rather the ratio of water to grain in your mash. For the Americans out there, it's 1.25 quarts per pound of grain. Now, one important thing to remember is to um, make sure your pot or your mash tun, uh, depending if you're doing brew in a bag or uh, all grain brewing, is large enough to fit the amount of grain you have plus three times that amount with water. As an example, when I used to do 10 gallon batches, we couldn't quite fit enough in and so if you can't fit all your grain and all your strike water in, you can always substitute some of your base grain for some dried malt extract of the pale variety. Uh, and that's just essentially using extract really. It's just uh, a way to keep your um, alcohol percentage up whilst not sacrificing any of the specialty malts and flavors that are gonna come through. Okay, so now that we have our strike volume, which is 18 liters, um, we wanna get to our pre-boil volume. Now, what we do there is we go up the next rung of the rainbow and we say, okay, we started with 18 liters. We now need to minus absorption. 
Now, again, this one's handy in the metric system because one kilogram of grain is going to absorb roughly one liter of water. Uh, for the Americans, one pint of water will be absorbed per pound of grain, I believe it is. You might have to double check that one. Um, again, it might not even out uh, quite between the two systems, but this is the easiest way to think about it. So we have our 18 liters and then we minus the absorption. So for us, uh, metric users, that's just minus the six kilograms or six liters of water. So that brings us back down to 12. And that means we can extract 12 liters of water from the uh, first runnings, from this first infusion. Um, and the difference between our pre-boil volume and our first runnings is what's called the sparge volume. Um, now you may have also heard of mashing out, uh, but I'm not gonna cover that. Normally that's just when you raise the temperature and optionally you can use boiling water to raise the temperature, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna say skip mash out and just use that difference as sparge water. Now, sparging is also a topic for another day, but you can think of it as just rinsing the grain with fresh water and then adding that into your kettle along with your first runnings, which is the wort that you extracted from the grain at the beginning. Brewing a bag is, it's just what's left behind when you remove the bag, um, including any squeezing. Squeeze for your life if you want to, or don't, it doesn't matter. Um, but yes, yeah, so looking back at our rainbow, we have our strike volume minus any absorption plus our sparge volume equals our uh, pre-boil volume minus our evaporation rate equals our post-boil volume minus any kettle loss equals our fermenter uh, volume uh, minus any fermenter loss equals our batch size. All right, let's go through this example of six kilograms of grain grist for a 20 liter batch. Let's do it again real quick. We have, starting at the back, a 20 liter batch size. Now personally, I'm gonna say we have a one liter fermenter dead zone, which is what's left behind in the fermenter. So I'm going to add that liter into our post boil volume, which makes it 21 liters that we need post boil. I'm gonna say that we don't have any kettle loss because I've got a little dip tube and I'm uh, not missing anything from the kettle. So post boil volume is definitely 21 liters. Um, to reach my pre-boil volume, I need to figure out my evaporation rate, which for me is three liters an hour. Now with a one hour boil, all I do is add that three liters back on top. So we now have a 24 liter um, pre-boil volume. So that's at the top, 24 liters. So back to the beginning, we need to figure out that we have six kilograms of grain. We times that by three, the ideal mash thickness to get to 18 liters of strike water. Um, we then minus the six kilograms or six liters of absorption water into the grain from our first runnings, which would leave us with 12 liters of first runnings. And the difference between our pre-boil volume and our first runnings equals our sparge volume, which is another 12 liters, uh, which reaches us to the 24. And that completes the uh, rainbow. Now that's all for this quick rundown of water calculations and terminology. I'm gonna get a bit more deeper into the uh, sparging process and the brew in a bag process in future videos, but I thought I'd like to cover this one first to make sure that you guys understand that yes, you can go and use brew toad or beer smith or anything like that to calculate your water, but you don't have to. You can also just do it in your head and it's a good check to make sure that you know what you're doing and if things go wrong, you can identify why, what volumes were reached and temperatures and all these sorts of things. Thanks for tagging along with all these water calculations and terminology. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I'm also going to put a link to the blog post here that will uh, explain all of these terminologies and calculations in text so you don't have to keep skipping through videos to find the information. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching Mashax. <laughs> Cheers.